Welcome back, it's Jason with your Hopium Free Crypto channel. Today we're looking at an update of the cryptocurrency markets after yesterday's minor dump. So we've seen a little bounce today and I want to update Bitcoin, our fear and greed plan and of course a couple of other majors like Ethereum. So without further ado, make sure you've hit the like button, it does go a very long way, especially in these very quiet times of a market where there is just no one watching. It's a boring time in the market, a lot of people have left the space. And unfortunately, they're going to miss out on the good times. So make sure you've hit that like button already. Subscribe to the channel, bell notification icon. Join me on Twitter and on Instagram for daily Q&A starting today. So make sure you're following and uh, ask your questions. Let's dive in. Now, I don't have a ton of news for you today. And I'm doing this one a little more ad hoc because I was planning just to let the day ride. But I want to get one video out a day, even through this bear market. So we're going to keep riding with it. And so basically, today is a nice succinct update especially after yesterday as i've said we're looking at a 1.3 trillion dollar market cap 46 percent dominance for bitcoin remember our whole play here is bitcoin is going to be the one that rides us through the next stage of the market so we're seeing altcoins bleed out that's why we keep following the dominance uh, ethereum's at 17 percent bitcoin 32,000 had a little bit of a bounce in the last 24 hours ethereum's had a bigger bounce and then we also see that follow through with Binance, Cardano, Lil on XRP, a little more on Doge, Polkadot. Look, everything's had a little bit of a bounce over the last 24 hours. But remember, it had been bleeding out for days and days and days. And then the last 20, uh, the last seven days has really shown that bleed out. But of course, Bitcoin's been the strongest out of pretty much everything in the top 20. So let's have a look at fear and greed. It's at 19 today. Yesterday we saw 15, which means we did buy some BTC yesterday. We got an extra thousand bucks on the plan. 31,383 was the purchase price. Our current price for Bitcoin is 31,717. So if we put that into our plan, 31,717, that will show us what the percentage is at the moment. So we're currently down about 7.6%. But remember, those times in May, this is really good to keep tracking it. If you remember back in May, we thought that we might bounce, we might get into the 40Ks and later May and also in June, it was looking like maybe we'll get this creep up into 45 or 46 grand. So you would be pretty happy with yourself buying at 37, 36, 34s and have an average price of about 34,700. But like we can see now, it looks like Bitcoin really does want to fall off a cliff's edge. That's the way I'm seeing it anyway. So looking at the weekly, we just see uh, more and more swings get taken out. So we're getting very close to that low again. But I want to go back to the daily chart and have a look at this. This just looks to me like it's just waiting really, really patiently to drop off an edge. All I see is days down. You know, they're white, but if you guys want some colored candles, here we go. Uh, basically, down, 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 down. We're having a little bit of a reversal. The volume has dropped off again, so there's no energy, lifeblood pushing us back up. And it just seems like everyone's getting bored with it and just waiting to see what happens next. So I suspect we'll probably see some more downside testing. Uh, our next levels, of course, are around that 28K. And going back to the plan, I've got option one and an option two here, which we can follow. This second option, I was contemplating having a, a sell order on the entire purchase. So the entire DCA plan, sell out all 11 grand, which is now worth 10,157. But I was looking at that when we break through the support levels and the support is around 28,000 800, 28,600. So somewhere around that 28K level, sell it all out and then start reinvesting again. I suspect we'll probably come back to some sort of other support level around that 18 to 27K level. So you're taking the gamble here. Will we get much lower prices to offset that loss? Because our average, remember, is around 34,700. For an easy number, it's around 35 grand. Say we sell at 28 grand then we've lost 20% of our portfolio. However, maybe we might buy it up cheaper at 18,000 or 20,000 or 22,000. So it would be worth it. So these are the two options I had in mind. I want to hear from you guys in the comments. Do you like that option? Would you use an option like that? An option to sell out at a support level that's been broken in an, in an attempt to purchase more Bitcoin 
at a cheaper price. Do you like that option? The other options that were coming up from the suggestions were to start buying more Bitcoin because of how slow the market is. I would definitely not be taking that option at the moment. People were getting cold feet. They felt like the money was burning through their fingers, burning through their pockets, and they wanted to start purchasing more Bitcoin on all of these drops at 31, 32, 30, 30 and a half, 32 and a half. I am not going that plan. I personally wouldn't do that because if the market is this quiet and just sort of drying up, then I suspect we're probably going to go a little bit lower. And, uh, you know, I want to preserve my capital. I don't want to just be throwing it out because I feel like the market, I feel like I need to be purchasing some Bitcoin. So this is why I've come up with these two options. Let me know in the comments down below. Do you want to stick with option one, which is essentially keep what we've got and just keep buying Bitcoin when the fear and greed reaches 15, like you can see yesterday, or less, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, whatever, right? We just purchase $1,000 of Bitcoin whenever that happens. And of course, that's going to then average our price down should the market continue to fall because long term, we still see the market going up. So it just forces us to buy Bitcoin when the market is the most fearful. All right. Option one, option two, option two is sell the entire portfolio at the break point of around $28,000, $29,000, which means we would lose about 20%. So we have $11,000 now, 20%, it's about 2200 bucks, okay? Uh, but with that's, that's in the hope that we would buy cheaper Bitcoin in the coming weeks. Let's have a look at the Bitcoin chart. So we've got some weekly swings on here. It looks like we're about to roll off another cliff's edge. You know, we've done that once before and we tried to rescue ourselves and we've done it again and then the speed... It's just picking up a little bit further here. We're starting to get really rocky and fallen off this, this cliff's edge. So I think this is going to happen in the next sort of one to three weeks. Could come a lot sooner, but I've got my my ideas out here. Between that one and three weeks, I'm suspecting sometime July or up to around mid-August. Something I think has to happen by that stage. And we will test the tops and the bottoms again. Like We might get these little fake outs where we see the market push down and you know then start to rally back again and then come again and then push up again and try to test some of these levels fall back like i think it's just going to do a, it has the option to do that sort of market movement so that's bitcoin at the moment as i said let me know about option one or option two we are definitely under this 50 percent level now which is around that 34k level volume just drying up remember what happened when the volume dried up at the highs the market tanked it's just no more energy no more lifeblood left in the market. Ethereum, similar sort of things happening here. We're just getting volume drying up. The support level of around 1800 continues to hold, but the the volume, as I said, there's nothing much there and the highs are all getting lower without any attempt to rally. And so even if we did get a rally, it's it could just be a false break, a false start. And we've seen that plenty of times before. Check out the, the previous bear market, a dump and then a, a false rally a dump, another false rally, a dump, a little rally. People get excited on each of these. You can bet your bottom dollar they would have 400 bucks up to 500, especially after you've been going down for several months. That seems like pretty amazing stuff, 25%. But then you get another falling out of bed and again and again and again, you know, it just keeps keeps hammering you down. But I think this time's probably going to be a lot quicker than this three years. I, I still can't see the three years at this point in time. Ethereum BTC continues to hold up reasonably well. So that's why we were consolidating through April and May into stronger positions, remaining in cryptocurrency, of course, stable coins, but BTC and ETH. So we do take a hit on these majors, but we consolidate and get out of a lot of the smaller projects. Altcoins still bleeding as we saw yesterday, and some of them have had a little rally. The hardest hit stuff I'll look at was say like Matic, which is now back up to 84 cents. But still, this is just, it's such a long way from home. I suspect it's got a little further to go. And then another hard hit crypto, which was a real uh, beauty through the bull market, was Theta. And this thing is just not even attempting to rally and break through the downtrend. So it is getting closer to these support levels, like these areas where it consolidated before it broke out. And so it has some possibility of um, at least finding some temporary support before breaking and then potentially fading again until the market catches up. So those levels are at like three bucks and then of course at 180 to two dollars. Theta BTC, that 
is on a heavy downtrend. I had this double top pegged in here weeks ago because we're on a weekly chart. And then generally, if you've been following, you know, we look for at least 100% from those double tops, potentially 150%, which would bring it all the way down to 5,000 Satoshis, which is a pretty long way from where it currently is. And you would lose a lot of BTC value. That's one of the main reasons why I'm still not getting into many of these major altcoins, which just look like they've been, they're just getting absolutely destroyed, bled out. VET is another one of those. VET, VChain, the beloved VET, crushed on BTC value around 55%. But if we look at something like Cardano, that has not been hit as hard. So Cardano BTC, it's not to say that it can't, but it's been holding up a lot better. It's only at 25% down, similar to Ethereum, actually. So that's that's pretty good. And we're still above this nice 50% level, which is uh, a sign of support. It's similar to if you wanted to use your moving averages and you're saying if it's above the moving average, it's strong. If it's below the moving average, it's weak. We're still above our 50% level here. And then these things are dynamic as well. Should there be a new top put in, you have to start to readjust these just like a moving average would, would move as well. So... That's the strength of some of the altcoins, the weakness in many of the other majors. Bitcoin to me still looks like it's wanting to roll off a cliff's edge. It does have the possibility to attempt some rally, some comeback into that 35, 36 grand. Uh, but overall, volume's gone. Market is, market is waiting for participants to come back and doesn't look like they're ready just yet. So let me know in the comments section your thoughts on the plan options one options two i hope you enjoyed today's update i thought i would just bring this to you on a sunday evening here sunday morning for guys on the other side of the world uh, make sure you like the video subscribe to the channel bell notification icon join me on the newsletter free newsletter if you guys haven't subscribed already make sure you do that just drop your email address down below on the link one email comes out every two weeks we're not bombarding you with it and it's a great report on stocks crypto and the property cycle which we see peaking later this decade if you want to get some of your profits into something else out there in some other asset class definitely follow the newsletter that'll help you out with uh, being a holistic all-round investor so thanks once again guys i'll catch you at tomorrow's video stay tuned like share subscribe share it with someone you think is going to find value i'll see you on twitter and instagram until then have more fun to get more done